Despite that engagement between the UK and Colombia, human rights abuses do continue, including in November last year the abduction and murder of a teacher trade unionist. Does the noble order minister agree that it would be proportionate to suspend the invitation to Colombia to join the UK Andean trade agreement, a call made by the TUC, until police abuses and impunity are properly addressed. The National Police have opened 231 internal investigations against members of their own institution for alleged excessive use of force during the 2021 protests. Currently, 111 inquiries remain open and the rest have been closed. Six police officers have been sanctioned and two have been dismissed from the institution. And the Prosecutor's Office confirmed that it had opened 200 inquiries for the alleged excessive use of force by the National Police during the 2021 protests. 94 disciplinary processes are un currently underway and three officers have been prosecuted. Is he aware that members of the Colombian Senate have warned that a new security law will further criminalise protests and weaken human rights protections? So what discussions has the Noble Lords Government had with uh, other ministers in the Colombian government on that issue of a new security law. Glo Global Witness Good reports day. that Colombia is the most dangerous place in the world to be an environmental activist. 65 people were killed in 2020. Given that the FCDO oversees the Climate Fund, will the government review environmental funding to Colombia to ensure that protecting environmental and indigenous activists is a key priority? The UK-Colombia Partnership for Sustainable Growth, which was signed in June 2019, formalises the relationship between the two countries on clean growth and climate change. The reason I mention all that is because Colombia is a COP26 priority country and the UK has committed over £240 million of international climate finance in Colombia since 2011. And the promotion of sustainable economic opportunities, we believe, will help tackle some of the root causes of ongoing violence. During the 2021 protests, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights received over 60 reports of sexual violations allegedly perpetrated by the Colombian police, many in the context of arbitrary arrests. Has the government raised these reports with the Colombian government, and if so, what has been their response? Um, the Colombian police and government is, is investigating a large number of um, various um, allegations of, of, of poor behaviour, and I will certainly take back the question and ask my colleagues. I'm sure the Minister, the Noble Lord, agrees that full implementation of Colombia's historic 2016 peace agreement remains crucial, but advocates for peace continue to face violence and intimidation. In December, a group calling itself the Black Eagles issued death threats against Colombian senators Ivan Cepeda, Victoria Sandino and Maria Jose Pizarro and a number of civil society activists. Will the minister condemn these threats and make representations to the, to the Colombian government over the safety of the named individuals? <clears throat> Excuse me, I think we should all condemn all threats to individuals in a, in a functioning democracy. Um, the UK has, as I said earlier, been a leading international advocate of Colombia's peace process. One of the clearest examples of personal freedom. Uh, in Colombia, the BBC have reported that 145 activists were killed last year. The Foreign Secretary says that the British policy for trade and diplomacy are now combined to support personal freedom. Now that we have an independent trade agreement with Colombia, what discussions have we had with regards to the human rights and trade policy with that country to protect personal freedom? The UK has a long-standing £2.1 million uh, police training programme uh, with the Colombian police. Not only did the December UN report into the April and May 2021 national strike protests conclude, and I quote, unnecessary or disproportionate use of force by Colombian police officers, but Amnesty International's November report into protests found that Colombian security forces, particularly the mobile anti-riot squad, inflicted more than 100 eye injuries with non-lethal projectiles a pattern of deliberate behaviour that they concluded was intended to punish victims for legitimately exercising their right to social protest. Is it not now time, after lots of requests for this, for a formal review of our continued support of the police training programme? 
Um, my Lords, obviously we're aware of those uh, reports of the eye injuries um, and as I said earlier, all of these things are being investigated. Um, we have made uh, representations to the Colombia, Colombian government um, as regards uh, police activities, but in terms of our activities with the police, can I just reassure Noble Lords that um, everything that uh, we are doing there is, is intended to support the development of civil society.